Welcome back to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to find the absolute value of a function. Now recall that the absolute value of a number can be thought of as its distance from zero on the number line. So here we have a number line. So let's say we want to find the absolute value of three. So we can see that three has a distance of three on the number line. So we write this as absolute value of three and that's equal to three. But what about if you wanna find the absolute value of negative three? So that is the distance from here, negative three to zero, and we write this as absolute value of negative three, and we can see that it's still three spaces from negative three to zero, so the absolute value of negative three equals three. And as you can see, the absolute value is written with two vertical lines around a number or an expression. So to summarize, the absolute value of a real number a is defined as, if it's the absolute value of a, we get a if the number a is a positive number or zero, and then the value, absolute value of a equals negative a if a is less than zero. Now the reason that it's negative a is because a is already a negative number, so when you have negative negative a, you actually end up with a positive value. So let's take a look at these two examples, or sorry, these three examples. So the absolute value of 9, so the distance from 9 to 0 is 9, and the absolute value of 0 is 0 because it's already at 0, and the absolute value of negative 12 is equal to 12. All right, in this next part, we're going to compare uh, what the graph looks like compared to its absolute value of that same graph. So here we have um, y equals x minus 1, all squared minus 4. So we're going to start by using um, a table of values just to graph this parabola here. So you can pause the video here to see if you can fill in the table yourself. I'm going to use the numbers negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I chose these numbers because the vertex I can see is 1, negative 4. And then plugging the other x values into my function, I get 5, 0, negative 3, and then negative 3, 0, and 5. So I'm going to plot these points onto my grid here. All right, so I've plotted these um, two, four, seven points onto my grid. So this is the graph of y equals f of x, this blue one here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph the absolute value. Now to graph the absolute value, you can see that the entire function on the right side has absolute values. So when you look at my table of values, it also has the absolute value symbol around f of x. So basically what I'm doing is I'm actually taking the absolute values of these y values in the second column here. So absolute value of 5 is 5, 0 is 0, absolute value of negative 3 is 3, 4, and so on. All right, so I'm going to graph these points also on the same grid so we can compare them. So we have 1 and 4. So we get these seven points here. When I connect them, I see that I get something that looks like this. Now we can see that the points that were over here, where I'm highlighting yellow, those are what we call invariant points because they stay the same um, from the original to the new graph. And then that part that is in the middle, I'll highlight that in blue here, that part, bottom part got reflected over the x-axis. So when I ask you to state the invariant points, what we're asking you is where are they? So we can say that we have negative 1, 0. We have 3, 0. And there's a lot more. So where are they? The invariant points are all the points where y is greater, 
or equal to zero on the original graph, y equals f of x. Now, if I want to take a look at the domain and range of the absolute value function, we can see that the red graph, the domain is all real numbers because it goes on and on left and right. And the range is now above the x-axis, so is y is greater or equal to zero. Now notice that how to graph y equals absolute value of fx, all the parts of the graph that are below the x-axis for y equals f of x, so this blue part that I've highlighted, are reflected above the x-axis. The invariant points are on the x-axis. but they also include any points where y is greater or equal to zero on the original graph. So where it was y equals f of x. So I'm gonna actually state that too. So this is the original graph. All right, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the original graph, but this time we're only gonna take the absolute value of x. Now I've given the same um, parabola, um, but this time you can see in the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the uh, second function, only the x has the absolute values around it. So I'm gonna recopy um, the x and the f of x values from before. Now I've re-graphed the points as well, so you can see on my right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now take uh, the x values and I'm gonna take the absolute value of them and then plug them into my equation. So let's see what happens. So when I take negative two, I'm gonna plug that into the x value here. So when I take the absolute value of negative two, I get two and the two minus one squared is one minus four, I'm gonna get negative three. Do the same thing with negative one. So absolute value of negative one is one, minus one is zero squared, and I get negative four. So we're gonna continue on with the rest of the points. So with zero, I get negative three. One, I get negative four. Negative three, zero, and five. So what you notice is that for negative two and positive two, I actually get the same f of x value, both negative three. For negative one and negative one, you can see that I get the same value for f of x as well, which is negative four and negative four. So let's see what it looks like when I graph this. So I have negative two, and I'm gonna have negative three, negative one, negative four, and so on. Now, even if I picked negative three, I know that when I pick x is negative three, that will give me the same y value as if it was three, if I choose x is three, which is zero. If I pick negative four, that will give me the same y value as when x is four. So that is going to be five. So you can see that I get a graph that looks like this. So why does this happen? So you can see that any of the x, the negative x values that I choose, it will give me the same y value as its positive x, its counterpart. So you actually get a reflection of the positive side of the graph over the y-axis. So this time, let me highlight, all of these points that I'm highlighting in yellow are the invariant points. So we can say that uh, we get zero negative three and there's also one negative four and so on so they are all the points where x is greater or equal to zero on the original graph which is y equals f of x now when we want to state the domain and range we can see that the domain of the red graph 
is all real numbers. It goes on and on left and right. And the range is y is greater or equal to negative 4. Since that is my lowest point down here. Now, notice that to graph y equals f and only the x is absolute, you can actually ignore all the values where x is negative because you will take the absolute value of those x values. So therefore, graph the values where x is positive and then draw its reflection over the x, oh sorry, over the y-axis. And then you can see that the invariant points are on the y-axis. And all the points this time where x is greater or equal to 0 on the original graph, y equals f of x. So again, this is the original graph. All right, let's use the techniques that I've just shown you um, to graph uh, the absolute value of this generic one that I, or this one that I've made up here. So let's graph first uh, y equals absolute f of x. So recall that when the absolute values around the entire function, the upper part where it's above the x-axis stays the same, but anything that is below the x-axis actually gets reflected above the x-axis. So for the first one, this part stays the same, and this part stays the same. But this bottom part, kind of like resembles a parabola, that gets reflected. So we can see that this is negative 2, negative 3. So it's going to be negative 2, positive 3. And then we have negative 1, negative 4. But now we're going to have negative 1, positive 4, and so on. So this parabola that's below the x-axis now will get reflected above. So this red graph is y equals absolute f of x. All right, so now let's take a look at y equals, oops, I want to use a different color to show you this. So y equals f of x. And I'll circle the first one to be red so you can see that one. So when we only want to take the absolute value just x, so recall that anything that is to the right of the y-axis, so that would be this part here, and this part, that stays the same. And then we can ignore everything that's on the left side or anything of the um, negative x values because when we take the absolute value of the negative x's, it's going to be the same as what we see on the positive x side. So this blue part that I've highlighted here, that's just going to get reflected over the y-axis. So we're going to get something that looks like this. And then here we have, let's see, we have 5 and 4. And that looks like a straight line. So I'm going to graph negative 5 and positive 4. And we're going to get something that looks like this. So you can see that the blue graph Actually, I'll write it down here. This is going to be y equals f, but only the x has the absolute. And, and that's it. Thank you.